If I tell you the symbols that are used to create a number, can you tell me what the number is? Well, that depends on what number system we're using. If we're using the standard number system that we all know, then I could give you the digits 1 and 2, and you would not know if I was creating the number 12 or 21 with those two digits. We're going to start by looking at the ancient Egyptian number system using hieroglyphs. If you recorded numbers in ancient Egypt, you would be using symbols. This number is 1,333,335. Here it is on a wall. The staff is worth 1. The lotus, 1,000. The god with outstretched arms, one million. If there was an ancient Egyptian in our crowd, they would be wondering, why on earth are you guys using the same symbol, one, for one, one thousand, and one million? They would argue, if you've got a million of anything, why not celebrate? <laughs> Raise your hands. <laughs> and if you just have one of something, well, that's pretty meager. Shouldn't your symbol reflect that that is pretty meager, so they would be totally confused at why we are using the same symbol for one, one thousand, and one million. One of the interesting things about the Egyptian number system, if you're a teacher, is that if your student mixes up that tadpoles are worth a hundred thousand and should go to the left of the bent finger, which is worth ten thousand, but they mix that up, well, you still know what their number is, so you can correct them. The Egyptian number system is commutative. It doesn't matter the order of the numbers. In fact, you can go to the uh, temple at Karnak and you can see that the numbers are just put in boxes. Here's an example. This is 4,622. So here the number is written vertically, but we still know what it means. al khwarizmi was one of the leading figures responsible for us adopting a place value number system. In that number system, you can't just shuffle up the digits, you can't place them in boxes randomly because the place matters. So the two here means 20, but the same symbol two over here means 2000. Order also matters in the Chinese abacus. So here's 2,301, which is different from 2,310. The upper beads are worth 5 and the lower beads are worth 1. You can count all of the beads touching the central bar. This is roughly the population of Shanghai. 23,019,143. Notice that the same three pattern means three or three million, depending on where it is. Notice the zero. Number systems which rely on place value really need this zero. And this abacus system has a pattern of beads which means zero, namely that the central bar doesn't have any beads touching it. Maria Montessori used manipulatives to teach mathematics to children. Does her number system use place value like a Chinese abacus, or in this respect, is it more similar to the ancient Egyptian number system? The first clue is that, like the ancient Egyptian number system, it lacks a symbol for zero. The second clue is that, like the ancient Egyptian number system, you could drop all the blocks and someone could still figure out what number you had built. So here I've scrambled them all, can you figure out what number I had built? Of course you can. The number is 2,397. Try doing that for a scrambled number in the Arabic number system, and you can just see how important place value is. Go ahead, figure out what number I've scrambled here. You can't. There's many possibilities. Roman numerals, like the number on this entrance gate to the Colosseum, lack a zero and they could usually be picked up and reassembled if they got scrambled, but not always. I'll leave that for you to ponder. Whether you use a number system that relies on place value 
or one which relies solely on symbols, you might end up being a little bit challenged whenever we deal with really large or really small numbers. So I've just measured the mass of the sun in kilograms. Are you suspicious? Well, you should be, because there's no way that my instruments are accurate enough to determine those digits. For example, the one at the end there. If I increase that to a three, that would be like I added the mass of a chicken to the sun. Of course I can't determine that. What about this two? Well, that would be equivalent of me adding the mass of the moon to the sun. Can I determine that? No, the mass of the moon is enormous, but compared to the mass of the sun, my instruments just aren't accurate enough to pick it up. So why don't we just replace all of those messy digits by ones, because we really don't know what they are anyway. Or maybe we should replace them by zeros, because that's the convention. Yeah, let's stick with the convention. Okay, so really the important information in this number is to be contained at this top end and also in the number of steps to get there. So the place value of that one. Well, let's figure out what that is. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. So that is a more compact way to describe the mass of the sun in kilograms. I Maybe my calculations don't even need me to be that exact. Maybe I could just say it's 2 times 10 to the 30th. The Babylonian number system is the last that we're going to look at. We're going to look at a single number here. It might look like three different numbers, but it's actually a single number. Those are three symbols. The symbol for 20, the symbol for 38, and the symbol for 21. The 20 is in the what we would think of as the hundreds position. Um, the 38 is in the tens position, and the 21 is in the ones position. But the Babylonians did not use base 10. Instead, they used base 60. So that 38 is not in the tens position, it's in the 60s position. And the 20 is not in the 10 times 10 position, it's in the 60 times 60 position. Ouch! So that's 2,280, and this is 20 times 60 times 60, that's 72,000. So this number is 74,301. I'll leave you to Google uh, the Babylonian number system to find out their major shortcoming and the problems that it caused. They forgot to invent zero.